and welcome back to Let's Play Mega Man X4 for the last time where we'll be playing as X, aside from a little bonus video I'm uh, gonna throw together after this. But Repliforce has flown off into space and Double uh, advises X that it is far too dangerous to go into space after them by himself, but uh, X considers there to be no other option. Every member of Repliforce must be destroyed. But, <laughs> before we do that, we actually have to head into Storm Owl's stage so that I can switch our Mega Buster to the Plasma Shot. So I'll meet you at the capsule. And here we are at the capsule in Storm Owl's stage. Of course, Dr. Light will go through his spiel again, and we are going to swap out our Stock Shot for the Plasma Shot. Uh, Plasma Shot is actually not quite as congruent with the rest of X's armor. It's got a strictly black, gold, and red palette compared to the more blended silver of the stock shot, but it still looks pretty cool. Now that we've done that, we can just escape out of here and get onto the final stage for real, where I'm sure nothing will uh, blindside us or go absolutely horribly. Let's go! Oh, not again. Hey, watch it! I'm terribly sorry. It's me. Those hunters must not be allowed in here. Terminate them! Roger. What a freak. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Double, what's the matter? Understood. I'm breaking contact. And now, X will be my next target. <laughs> well, Legas, Double is in fact a double agent. Who would have thought? Uh, but yeah, actually I don't think his voice acting was that bad in that scene. Unfortunately, he's uh, going to get a chance to prove that he uh, is not exactly the best actor in the world. Uh, coming up very shortly. But, uh, we'll get to that when we get to that. Anyways, the final stage of the game, uh, rather unimaginably just named Final Weapon, is not exactly the most challenging thing in the world. Uh, let's just, uh, use Rising Fire, uh, or Rising Fire, yes, to get rid, rid of that guy. Let's head on into, uh, this boss door here. Pretty early for a boss fight, kind of strange, honestly. But, heading over here... What the heck? Double, you were grounded. How did you get here before us? X, whatever. Anyways, uh, Double is uh, just uh, looking to blow his load immediately and just attack X right out of the starting gate. Uh, that was a slight mistranslation there. Uh, he meant to say Maverick Hunters. Well, at least he's uh, confident of uh, X's piety. But yes, Double is going to fight us. <laughs> You're gonna get hurt, X. That was one of the lamer uh, pre-battle quotes that he can say. Uh, he has three different ones that he can say. Also, I screwed up there. Anyways, uh, Double, somewhat uniquely, he is immune to uh, uh, Mega Buster shots that are not fully charged. Uh, Pellets and half charge shots will leg over him. He likes to use his evil slash. He jumps up to the wall and then he slashes uh, where you are currently positioned. So you just want to time your wall jump so that he doesn't fly right into you. The first one I kind of screwed up and he just turned around and hit me. Uh, now Double does have a weakness, unlike uh, Colonel, the other uh, kind of mid boss that we've uh, thought that it wasn't a listed maverick. Uh, he also has, uh, like, three different things he can say when he, uh, starts a fight. Uh, that is actually something kind of interesting to note, is that, uh, Double is one of the few bosses that, alongside Colonel and, uh, another couple that we'll be fighting later, that, uh, actually keeps voice acting. In the original Japanese version, all the Mavericks had voice clips that they said, but those got removed in the localization, or they didn't feel like dubbing new ones. Uh, anyways, Double does have a weakness, so let's hit him with it. Uh, he is somewhat fitting. Ah, stupid aiming laser. When the aiming laser locks on, you can't switch it with the, uh, quick, uh, select. 
Uh, he is weak to the double cyclone, somewhat humorously. But if you do that, he shoots out uh, these uh, little uh, things to uh, make dodging much harder. And, uh, oh god, I am uh, in a very bad situation here. I've actually uh, never really bothered to uh, try dodging these things, so I'm actually not sure what their patterns are like. Looks like you can just destroy them. Anyways, here's his final attack, where he uh, shoots out those big blades. Just have to dash under one, and then uh, wall kick over the other one. And I am not doing so great here, but we defeated him. Yeah, I actually, uh, it's been a very long time since I've tried using double cyclone on him, so uh, that is the first time in years I've seen what it actually does. Hmm. Looks like he thinks very lowly of X. Double's kind of a psycho. Well, it didn't cost him too much this time around. It looks like uh, Double's become neutral this time around. This time he's just at the afterlife. I guess he's well aware that he is uh, going to where, uh, you know, not where the good folks go. Hehe. <laughs> But yes, now we are in the second stage of Final Weapon. Uh, there is actually something of an interesting thing about this uh, second half of the level. Just got these big uh, shield robots here who are not really any big deal. As you can see, the plasma shot, its big thing is that it leaves a huge uh, ball behind that does continual damage. Very effective against uh, mini-bosses who do not have invincibility frames, and uh, decently effective against regular enemies. Kind of a hassle against bosses, though. Now, we can either go forward, or this uh, is actually a way we can drop down. There are two routes you can take to get through this level. For X's story, we're going to be taking the bottom route. We'll be taking the top route when we come back here as zero. Uh, in this bottom route, we've got a lot of enemies to deal with. Ah, jeez. Yeah. You gotta kind of react uh, preemptively to these things. Uh, let's just shoot a plasma shot up there. There is a uh, mech that will be firing missiles up there, and you can preemptively destroy it with the plasma shot if you have it. Over here, we just want to slide down and then air dash. Uh, if you do not have the leg module, you have to uh, drag down that wall to the left and uh, jump at the last possible moment before you uh, slide to the kill plane. Over here, we've got a ride armor, which we will be taking this. We will just use a charge shot to get these guys out of the way, or not. Use a charge shot to take this guy out so he is not hassling us, and deal with these guys accordingly. Yeah, these things pretty annoying to deal with. Alright, do that, and we're at the end already. Nothing too difficult here. Now, I'm actually going to do something I don't typically use, do uh, for this Let's Play. I'm actually going to be equipping a sub-weapon, and we are going to be using it for the entirety of this upcoming boss fight. Uh, anybody who's played the game before knows exactly why I'm doing this. Now, heading over this way, suddenly, uh, with Gratuitous Pop-In, it's General, leader of Repel Force. Time for the final showdown with Repel Force itself. For Reploids, by Reploids. Nope. He's, uh, he's pretty resolute. I do feel like uh, X isn't so uh, blameless in all this, but uh, Repel Force has also been kind of needlessly defiant. Show me your true power. Ah, uh, General has three quotes he can say there. Uh, he did not say my favorite one. Uh, anybody who's played the game before knows what my favorite one was. And he starts with his most annoying attack. He creates platforms out of his hands, and he. He is continually shooting you with these circular energy blasts. Uh, it is very annoying and difficult to actually hit him while he's doing this. Yeah, as you can see, I can screw up. Uh, the uh, exhaust from the hands uh, can also hurt you, and boy, this is going bad. Uh, the reason I'm using Twin Slasher is because, of course, it's his weakness, as you can imagine. Uh, and it does the same amount of damage a fully charged Buster Shot will do to him. Uh, the hands, you cannot shoot through them. You have to actually hit his uh, head. Uh, other attacks he can do is that he can just uh, fly towards you and you have to jump over him as he approaches. Which, hopefully, he does that here. Yes. And he has a couple more attacks that he can use as the fight drags on. I'm using the Twin Slasher here just because it is much quicker and much less tedious to fight him this way. Uh, if you so choose, though, uh, X can 
charge up uh, Buster Shots and just leap across the battlefield to hit him that way. But uh, I just want this to go by as quickly as possible. Doing the charge shot method, especially now that I have the plasma shot, would make this take a lot longer. As you noticed, he does a ton of damage to you. Uh, because I have all the health upgrades here, I'm not too concerned about avoiding a ton of damage. And I, uh, like I said, I have low percent uh, recordings for all these fights, where I defeat him with only the Mega Buster without taking too, too much damage. So, you know, that's what we will uh, see later in the next bonus video. Here is his final attack. He can create these spikes that he fires at you. Pretty good opportunity to just uh, leap the entire room. Uh, you do have to be a certain amount of distance to him or close to him to actually hit him uh, with the Mega Buster. Uh, Twin Slasher obviously has much more limited range, but with the Mega Buster, if you fire from all the way at the edge of the screen, your shots will actually uh, fade out of existence before they hit him. So you do have to be a certain uh, amount of close to him to actually hit him. Hmm, what's up? Oh gee, I wonder who. Looks like uh, Earth is in the path of fire now. And once again, it falls to X to save the world. Heading back to the stage select screen, Double is no more. He is dead, because we killed him. Anyway, back to Final Weapon. Heading into Final Weapon. We've got a first section here that uh, houses no challenge unless you are spectacularly incompetent. Got some spike pits here, as well as some energy we can pick up to fill our sub tanks. Heading down this way, we are in the obligatory Mega Man X boss rush. But hey, this is an opportunity to show off weapon weaknesses as well as charged weapons that I have not had a chance to do so. Heading into here. Starting things off, we've got Web Spider. I'll get a fully charged Twin Slasher going, just to start. Fully charged weapons actually do require energy still, even if you have the helmet module. Alright, let's just let uh, Web Spider come down. As you can see, it does a decent amount of damage to him. And let's just hit him with the uncharged variants. Uh, I could have sworn there was a thing where, like, you could slash through his, uh, webbing. Anyways, we're just going to go back to the standard tried-and-true Mega Buster, just because that's what I like using. Yeah, I, I suppose it doesn't matter too much. I've already got low percent of everything. Why not uh, go nuts with the Twin Slasher? And he's down, so now we should be able to hit him much more regular. Yeah, just keep hitting him. Yep. Not much to say about this guy now that I've already uh, fought him, so yeah, let's just uh, tear right through him. Ah, jeez, I can't believe I took that hit there. Oh, come on. Just one hit short. Oh, well. But yeah, that's Web Spider. Yeah, not a whole lot to say about the boss rush. Uh, unfortunately, that's kind of always the downside of doing the boss rushes in Mega Man, is that you've already defeated them, and you're much, much more well-equipped, and arguably much more capable than you were uh, when you first fought these guys. Heading over here, I believe this will be Magma Dragoon. He is actually weak to the Double Cyclone, not the Frost Tower. Guess he just burns too hot for ice to be of any effect against him. Okay, so we'll just uh, see what he opens up with, and then I'll hit him with Double Cyclone. Don't want to get too overeager. Oh, hey, uh, I was uh, wondering if that actually had any effect on him, like uh, certain other bosses. Yep. Okay, and, uh... Oop. Yeah, not paying too much attention here. Yeah, let's just uh, stick to the weaknesses for these fights. And we can just catch him in a loop like so. Yep. This is sure is a boss fight. Sorry, I, I really don't know what to say about these guys after defeating them the first time, so I guess I'll just talk about whatever and whatever. Uh, so, uh, getting close to the end of Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3, uh, man, that game's taking me a better part of a month. Uh, my current uh, Steam time for that is uh, 95 hours, although there is some idle time mixed in there, as there is, as you'd expect with any RPG, you know. Sometimes it's, you just get up and leave it running, like, eh, I'll come back to it later. And then I did. Uh, on the final chapter of the game, I got quite a few of the achievements. Uh, 43 out of 52, I think, is how many there are in that particular game. I forget which bosses. I want to say it's Jet Stingray. But yeah, I'm enjoying it. Uh, 
Oh, uh, this is uh, Cyber Peacock, I believe. Yep, Cyber Peacock. Yeah, what the heck, we'll show off the fully charged soul body. Yeah, let me see. There it is. But yeah, I'm enjoying it. As far as, like, uh, rating it compared to uh, the other games in the Cold Steel series specifically, I definitely would say it was one of my less preferred... Okay, what the heck is this? Okay, it creates some kind of decoy. That was weird. Uh, I'm just gonna stick to the Mega Buster for this fight. Uh, soul body's not too much faster. But yeah, I... Generally a slightly stronger writing than Cold Steel 2, but I feel the gameplay uh, is a bit weaker than it was in uh, Cold Steel 2. Uh, and it's a bit more fleshed out than Cold Steel 1, but it's also a heck of a lot easier. Very, very much a game that's broken in the player's favor. So no, nah, I'm not a huge fan of that. I, I suppose I could ban things uh, to make it more challenging on myself. But, yeah, for uh, first playthrough, and honestly something that I'm trying to be as one done as possible with it, uh, I'd rather not do that, and rather just get through the game as effectively as possible. Not sure how, what exactly you're supposed to do with the charge ver variant of uh, Soul Body, but uh, I do enjoy it overall. If I had the rating in the series overall, I'd say I'd probably like it a little bit better than uh, Trails in the Sky FC so far, just to, due to the heavily fleshed out and more well-designed mechanics. But I don't uh, think it's any better than any other game in this series. Uh, definitely uh, doesn't hold a candle to uh, my personal favorites like uh, Trails in the Sky SC and strictly on a gameplay level, uh, the immediate predecessor, uh, Cold Steel 2. Anyways, uh, here is... Where is it? Storm Owl. He is, of course, weak to... Wow, that actually uh, does quite a bit to him. Let's see. Ooh. Wow, that actually utterly destroys him. I'm trying to get the charged weapon in here. Okay. Oh, okay, it makes like a little uh, thing. Well, whoop. Yeah, aiming laser is very wonky. Uh, I've never, uh... Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I've never really bothered to use this weapon too much before, so uh, I'm kind of floundering with it. Uh, the previous uh, thing that I screwed up was I was holding it uh, instead of... Uh, just letting the laser go. There we go. I'm learning new things as I do this Let's Play. Uh, once I finish up with Cold Steel 3, I'm probably going to get right into uh, Cold Steel 4, so that'll probably keep me busy for the rest of this month and well into May, most likely. Uh, game I'm looking to pick up uh, once I'm done with that, and I should be done with it by June, is I'm looking to pick up the new uh, Fire Emblem Warriors game. Uh, I really liked uh, Three Houses and the cast, so I I'm interested to play a game that features them and... Uh, greater capacity, or just in any more capacity than the... I I'm kind of botching the way I want to explain this, but basically I'm just looking forward to having more of that cast. Okay. Uh, once again, uh, this is a boss I feel like uh, it's more effective to just use the Mega Buster on him. Also, as you can see, uh, the Plasma Shot just kind of completely uh, torpedoes his gimmick. But yeah, the new Fire Emblem Warriors should be fun. Uh, if I can find time for it, I'll also play a little bit of the original Fire Emblem Warriors. I have that game, but I've only played like uh, 10 hours of it. I don't quite like it as much as uh, Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition, but uh, I do think it's uh, mechanically uh, got quite a lot of improvements, and uh, I'm, I'm interested to see uh, if it uh, impresses me more, if I give it more effort. Of course, that's just something I gotta find the time for. Got a bunch of games that I got out that I really want to dive more deeply in. Uh, I picked up uh, Resident Evil Dark Side Chronicles. Uh, I got that alongside uh, Umbrella Chronicles, which I, I've owned from a long time ago. I was recently visiting my dad, and uh, he had it uh, in his basement, so I decided to bring it along home with me. Uh, playing a little bit of that, of course. Uh, not having played a light gun game in quite some time, I'm not doing so hot at it, but you know. I'd like to try out Dark Side Chronicles, because I never got to try that when it was new, and I want to finish uh, Resident Evil Code Veronica. I actually have the original Dreamcast version of that game. Uh, I've been playing a little bit of that. Uh, another uh, game that I... Oh, man, I am screwing up uh, so hard. I am just gushing about the games. Uh, let's uh, hit him with a Shoryuken. Yeah, that doesn't do too much. Again, we're just going to be sticking to the Mega Buster for this guy. But yeah, playing the original Dreamcast version of Code Veronica, uh, hopefully I can uh, find some time to actually play a little bit of that. Uh, I definitely like it. Uh, mechanically, it's a very solid uh, game. Uh, definitely one of the more interesting uh, classic Resident Evil games that I've played. Let's see if this guy gets a chance to use his uh, other attack. 
Uh, aside from that, uh, what else am I interested in? Uh, played a little bit of uh, Lobotomy Corporation, a uh, very brutal uh, management sim game. Uh, and I don't know if uh, any of you uh, watching this video have ever heard of it, but basically it's a uh, Basically, the uh, spiritual licensee of the SCP Foundation, uh, the abnormalities in that game, call on heavily from uh, the different uh, iterations of... Well, not iterations, but it's very much uh, modeled after the SCP Foundation. The inspiration is not lost, if you're familiar with SCP. I actually haven't played too many SCP games. The only one I've ever played is, I think it was SCP-87, The Endless Staircase. Anyways, uh, there's a... Uh... Okay. I didn't get it on screen, so here's what the uh, charged electroweb looks like. Uh, actually, wow, that does horrible damage to him. Way less than just uh, hitting him with uh, the uncharged weapon. Oh, jeez. As you can see, though, you can keep him from splitting if you keep hitting him with, with electrowebs. Ah, this is getting boring. Uh, we'll hit him with one more and then we'll switch off. And, once again, back to Mega Buster. But I've only played a little bit of that. I think I've, like, got up to Day 7. That was just something I was messing around with when I was, uh, coming home late at night from work, uh, night shifts at work. Okay, so, since he's doing that, yeah, he's gonna go overhead. Let's see what he does here. Okay, should be fine there. Just paying really close attention. Uh, Split Mushroom, it's very easy to get uh, over-invested in trying to attack him. You really want to pay attention to where he's moving if you want to avoid damage. But we're uh, almost done with the boss rush. Just got Slash Beast to take care of. Uh, I'll go get the uh, energy, just in case. I shouldn't need it, but it doesn't hurt to grab it. Okay, get the Ground Dasher? Chaser? Ground Chaser? Whatever. Uh, the Jet Stingray weapon out. This is Slash Beast's weakness. It trips him up because he is fleet of foot and uh, he cannot stand to be tripped up. But yeah, that just knocks him over. And Charge 1 is like, oh hey, I got a new metal! I I'm guessing that's uh, hitting every boss with a weakness. Oh geez. Oh geez, uh, he actually reacts uh, very negatively. Oh, looks like it's actually uh, weakened his... Uh, his uh, slash attack, he doesn't fire two of them now. Now that I'm actually paying attention. Yeah, that's another thing that he does when he can uh, do that, like, uh, reel up with his claws move. Is just, oh, there's his uh, last move. As you can see, that hurts pretty badly. But the plasma shot took him out. Yeah. Honestly, uh, hitting the boss with their weakness kind of really changes up their behavior in ways that I've never seen before, because I never bother with the weaknesses. So I did not realize that he actually would immediately react aggressively when uh, hit with his weakness. But hey, that is another thing that I've actually managed to accomplish via doing this Let's Play. Uh, Let's Playing is surprisingly good for getting achievements in games. Also, hey, it's Sigma. <laughs> Are you surprised? Sigma is now the Grim Reaper. <laughs> but yes, Sigma is behind everything. He set up Repl for us, he was the one who sent Double to us, and he wants to take out X. <laughs> His life does in fact depend on it. I'm going to do something that's a bit uh, unorthodox uh, on its face. We're just going to switch to Rising Fire right away. For reasons. For reasons. Heading into this surprisingly ominous looking reactor room. I'm not really sure why it looks like this. I, Are you ready for I guess Sigma did some journey? interior decorating. But Sigma in this robe form, he is completely invincible. He has a very simple attack pattern though. He just shoots out those orbs. You hit him with Rising Fire. Uh, Rising Fire is the only weapon that can hurt him. Uh, he is invincible to every other type. As you can see, the charged attack does a ton of damage. Though it does not interrupt his attack. So I got hit by the orbs there. There is his final attack. Uh, he does a sweep across the room. If you can't kill him right there, uh, then you just have to go through the wall and jump over over him. Now is here where the fight gets a little bit trickier. Now I'm just going to uh, pause the game so I can quickly uh, 
well, not in real time, but in game time, just quickly switch back to the X-Buster. First, he'll jump into the air, throw his scythe at you, just dash to the other side of the room. Now, what we want him to do is throw the scythe at us, it'll hit the wall, then we can... Oh, screwed that up. I'll get another chance to show it off, but we want to jump behind them. There's a bit of a dead zone behind his head, where you can just slide behind him and uh, pluck char or plug charge shots into his head. Alright, let me do this correctly. Just head over here and jump right over him, and yeah, we can just go onto the wall, start hitting him with charge shots. And we should have him uh, done after one more cycle. Now, I know what you're thinking. What if the scythe doesn't hit the wall? So we're just going to let that happen. Uh, the energy starts going along the floor, and he starts throwing these boomerangs at you. Uh, it's very easy to get hit by those boomerangs, so be careful. But yeah, we got him. I prefer to uh, have him hit the wall just because it is uh, much easier to uh, avoid damage that way. Uh, those lasers moving along the floor, uh, you cannot avoid them unless you're on the wall, so you're intended to jump over his head to get around them. And obviously, the wall that is electrified by his scythe, uh, he can't jump on there. Now, here comes a really annoying fight. Now, this is Alien Sigma, as people like to dub him, and he actually has four distinct parts, well, five distinct parts to him. First, he's going to send out these heads at us. This one shoots fire at us. Very easy to dodge. Just let it shoot two uh, fire patterns along the floor. Then when you're wall kicking up, oh, here is the next phase. Uh, this is the garbage spitting phase. Uh, with the plasma shot, we can actually deal with this very easily. Uh, if you do not have the plasma shot, just uh, when he is done inhaling, uh, just go to the opposite wall from him and wall kick all the way up to the top. The garbage will never hit you, but you can just uh, throw uh, charge shots at him to avoid him that way. Here is uh, another phase of his uh, where he uh, just shoots where we were previously standing. Very easy to avoid. This is the best opportunity to deal damage to his alien phase. Uh, the alien phase uh, has the other uh, has one other type of shot he can do where you can only get in one attack against him, really. Let's see if Garbage Sigma does his other uh, thing. Nope. Uh, now, when he is actually inhaling the garbage, you don't have to worry about getting hit. Uh, the garbage does not actually deal any damage when it's being inhaled, only when he's exhaling it. But yeah, if you do not have the plasma shot, uh, it's actually very There's the other version of the attack you can do. He says the end, and he just shoots the floor. Oh, this one is a little tricky to dodge, but you just want to go to the blue head and then jump between the third shot coming out to avoid it. As you can see, it uh, destroy it uh, splits out into electricity on impact with the floor. But yeah, plasma shot, very good for destroying the garbage as he spits it out. Uh, if you do not have the plasma shot, and even if you have the stock shot, uh, I would not advise attacking him when he does that. Uh, he is weak to ground chaser, but I don't really find it uh, to be too easy to actually get that against him. Uh, I'll probably use Nova Strike at some point in this fight just to show it off. But yeah, once you know uh, all his attack patterns, uh, he's uh, pretty easy to deal with. Uh, we, we saw the uh, blue head uh, earlier. That just uh, spits ice along the floor. You can either just wall kick off the heads to the left, or you can stand on the ice head to deal with it. He is not doing his other attack, and I want him to do it so we can see what it looks like. But yeah, it is so good to be able to destroy the garbage as it comes out of his mouth with the plasma shot. In fact, you can end these phase faster if you destroy the attacking head, but it's only really feasible with the plasma shot, which can lay out that kind of damage to deal with that quickly. But yeah, let's just destroy it, and there it goes. Alright, is he going to do the other attack finally with Garbage Sigma? Nope, he is sticking to his guns. Well, just in the very unlikely chance that he doesn't use it, uh, what he does is that he starts blowing you into the wall, which uh, materializes spikes. Uh, the spikes are not auto-kill in this fight, they just deal damage to you. But, you know, obviously undesirable, and you know, you don't want Mega Man to have to deal with his greatest weakness. Okay, just go over these, and hopefully he'll finally do his final attack. Okay, there we go. And this is as good an opportunity as any to use Nova Strike. There we go. Didn't do barely any damage, so <laughs> whatever. I just wanted to show it off. Alright, heading into this next iteration of the alien phase. Just hit him once. Yeah, this fight can take uh, variable lengths of time depending on what he decides to do, so... Uh, sometimes uh, that alien phase will always do the uh, repeated shots and that just takes care of that really easily. Uh, sometimes he will just uh, 
do the, the end, and the fight will take forever for that particular phase. I'm surprised I avoided that, because I kind of screwed up my timing there. I'm getting the hang of this. Oh, come on, dude. Yeah, well. Man, we're getting this one a lot. I used to have uh, serious trouble dodging this one, and my uh, attempts on the fight would depend on how many times he did that attack. Uh, if he did it a lot, then I would uh, <laughs> pretty much always lose. Ah, I screwed up. I l released the charge shot too early. It would have killed him there if I had released it at the proper timing. Oh, well. Come on, Alien Sigma. Show us what you got. Okay, now he's doing an attack. Oh, whoops. That's actually pretty bad. Oh, well. Yeah, I just kind of robbed myself of a sp space where I could uh, jump away more easily. But as you can see, the gun itself has no hurt box, so there's no problem with just jumping through it. Just be careful, because uh, the actual body of them does have a hurt box, and uh, you can find yourself caught in that uh, and taking a ton of damage if you're not careful. There's Garbage Sigma taken care of, and the most hated part of the fight. He's just saying, the end again. Uh, even if you have the stock shot, the Mercy Invincibility on him lasts too long to hit him with multiple charge shots when he does that attack. You can only ever hit him with one. Okay. Might be able to take him out here, depending on how it goes. Come on. Yes! Got him! Alright. Not the cleanest uh, instance of that fight I've ever had, but good enough. Oh, man. It really is a colony drop. My uh, space station, uh, space colony arc comparisons were very apropos. Also, I'm just now realizing that they recycled the ending of this game for the entirety of Mega Man X5. Sigma's not very creative with his evil plots, I've noticed. It's either infect people or bomb the Earth. Very little in-between on that. Hey, General, you're hanging in there. Oh, he's just gonna ram himself right in the, uh, reactor, I guess? Ah, uh, well, I guess if that's how you feel. Well, pretty much everybody except for X in this game has died. Kind of a downer, honestly. Headquarters. Zero. It's good to see you're safe, X. I was really worried about you. Sorry about that. Don't worry. It's all over. Go home and rest. You've earned it. But Zero. What? What if I become one of the Mavericks? Don't ask such silly question. I'm breaking contact now. Wait, Zero. I'm I'm serious. Zero. If if I become a Maverick. You have to take care of me. Don't be ridiculous. Now hurry on back. Promise me. Zero. You know, that's the only properly anime cutscene that X appears in in this whole game. Zero, by contrast, gets a lot more. Uh, as we'll be seeing when we get into Zero's story, uh, this game is much more about him than it is X. Uh, X in this game, uh, I didn't really comment on it, but uh, shares a voice with the voice of Mega Man in Mega Man 8, and uh, for reasons that you probably don't have to think too hard about, this version of the character is affectionately dubbed Mega Girl. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure why they decided to retain Mega Man's voice, uh, for X. Uh, it is wildly inappropriate for the character, but whatever, that's what they decided to do. Uh, economizing, economizing. Anyway, X, uh, after all the fighting that he's been through, has, uh, expressed some 
level of reservation about what he's doing and is afraid that he too might eventually become a maverick, requesting that Zero take care, quote unquote, of him. Uh, this is a complete red herring, and in Mega Man X5, instead it's Zero who goes Maverick. Sorry if I have, uh, am spoiling the tightly woven narrative of Mega Man X for you. I honestly would have been an interesting concept if X went Maverick instead. Yeah, here's to the could've beens, here's to the could've beens. Ah, man, that, actually, that, that was gonna be the thing for Mega Man Zero, but they, uh, they, they chickened out on that, he was just a copy. Oh, again, I, I wish they would have uh, gone through with that. It would have been interesting. Eh, yeah, whatever. But that was X's story of Mega Man X4, the generally easier of the two stories. Uh, Zero is retooled in a way that uh, he is much less safe to use as X, but uh, if you can master him, he is actually very effective against a lot of the bosses and enemies in this game in ways that X cannot hope to do, unless you make heavy use of special weapons, I suppose, but I prefer to use the Mega Buster just because that's what I like. But I hope you enjoyed watching. I uh, won't uh, say this is the end of the Let's Play, because obviously we've got to do Zero's story, but uh, very nice uh, credits music we got here. I also really like that uh, uh, reprise of the Sky Lagoon theme for X right at the end of his final cutscene there. I thought that was a nice touch. Kind of wish that song would make a comeback. It's one of my favorite opening stage themes. But, yes... That is the end of X's story. I hope you'll stick around for Zero's, and we'll see the interesting ways that the story plays out if Zero is the focal character. And you are very welcome for uh, making this uh, awesome game for me to play, Capcom. Or, I guess I suppose I fake, uh, thank the exact creative team involved, but that's a lot of names for them to memorize. Shorter credit sequence than Mighty Number no. 9, though. Ho ho ho. But that is it for this video. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope to see you next time. Until then, goodbye.